and so we could be here for a while, but I hope the video, this type of video, helps to shut off your brain a little bit, help you go to sleep, but maybe, just maybe subconsciously, soak everything up like a delicious little, little sponge. So, let us, let us begin. This is what you should expect when this video. Fact numero. of 
there's like somebody didn't just make this right they had to bring it to a board they had to suggest it they had to say how much it would cost they had to possibly say how much money it would save you know like think of all the squirrels we have to collect off the road if we just made a bridge for them <laughs> i wonder how they knew that um that only five crossed in two years if there's a camera or what 2014 three squirrels and 2015 two squirrels were spotted on the bridge and the government said in a statement okay this one's just gonna make me angry subway footlongs aren't a footlong when confronted about this fact the sandwich chain explained that with regards to the size of the bread the calling and calling it a footlong subway footlong is a refer or is a registered trademark as a descriptive name for the sub sold in subway restaurants and not intended to be a measurement of length so it's straight up a scam i'm just gonna to call my realty business million acre realty i guess that actually is fine but they're straight up saying their sandwiches are a foot long cheeky very business savvy very wrong and i do not like you nobody likes subway anyway it's okay mary curious notebooks are still radioactive so the mother of modern fifth fith fith was known for her work with radioactive materials and the discovery of elements like polonium and radium unfortunately her research took a hefty toll on her health leading plastic anemia, which caused her death. The exposure to radioactivity didn't just affect her. It also affected most of her belongings, including her clothes, furniture, and books. Now, more than a century later, her notebooks have to be stored in a lead box, as they're still radioactive. I love how to, like, prevent the radioactivity of plutonium. They're like, let's take lead. That's never hurt anybody. It's like one bad of bad. Yeah, there's a term for that. I think it's a type of um, philosophical point, a standpoint. It's like you do the thing that has the least amount of suffering. One in three divorce filings include the word Facebook. This is why I deleted my Facebook. I, I can't be having a divorce right now, guys. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Bam. I feel like such a geezer when I say this, but truly, multiple, many, most aspects of the internet are awful for us. Absolutely awful. But mainly, apparently, for the elderly married. That was the case in 2011, according to the American Academy of Something Lawyers. The number's likely risen since. We've had instances where they pull up a Facebook in the course of a disposition divorce lawyer told ABC News once it's out there for the world, it's very difficult to erase from the past. Yeah, I guess you could say that about anything, so the fault isn't Facebook. It's like if somebody tweeted about their day, even from two years ago, they can use that as evidence to prove that the marriage was unstable or unhappy or whatever. That's actually kind of a good thing and a benefit to social media, you know? It's not like you're cheating or doing anything wrong, it's just like, hey, here's the proof you said it. Blood banks in Sweden notify donors when blood is used. That is precious, absolutely precious. I, a shameless self-plug, but I love to donate all the time, even though my mother says I shouldn't. And I think 
smile were slim to none. Oh, so people literally just smile when they think of the word cheese. They're like, hey, cheese, that sounds funny, but you say prunes, 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 and it's like pushing everything down. I get it. Kind of sucks that people thought that way. There's just generations and generations of film photos of just people looking pissed everywhere they are. It's like the Grand Canyon and the family looks like they were just being, I don't know, ready to get hung. Roosters have built-in earplugs. Well, that explains a lot. Not very considerate of them because I guess they don't know that we don't have those either. Considering how roosters call can get up to 140 decibels or louder, it might leave one to wonder how the rooster himself keeps from going deaf when that noise is coming right out of its beak. It turns out the farm fowl has built-in earplugs. Researchers found that when a rooster opens its beak to crow, its external auditory canals close off, preventing sound from coming in and serving as earplugs. I wonder how effective that actually is, because if you're doing something, the sound's going that way. Especially if you're a rooster and you're outside, the sound's going away from you and not bouncing off of anything to come back at you, right? And even people, when you plug your ears and you talk, you can still hear yourself talking. So, good job, evolution. I guess. <laughs> the Netherlands is so safe.
cyanide inside Tylenol capsules. I'm smiling just because it's so crazy and wild, but I, it was a large amount of people who died. It was crazy. In the past, they never had um, those seals on the top, so somebody could just buy the pills, uh, put cyanide, replace all the pills with cyanide, and then put it back on the shelves, right? So, let me actually read it before I misinterpret what it actually was. These foil seals added to the top of medicine bottles that can be so annoying to remove was put in place after a rash of poisonings occurred in, the ni in 1982, in which seven people in Chicago area were killed after ingesting Tylenol laced with potassium cyanide. So yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking. Even worse was, uh, this is all where people start to notice that you're not supposed to stay, say stuff on the news as copycats then follow, because what happened, of course, after the news started saying there's this mysterious person who killed all these people with cyanide in medicine bottles, a bunch of dumb people were like, hey, instead of thinking of my own way to do it, I'm going to copy this person and be cool too. So it was a really bad drink of copycats afterwards as well. I think that's where um, needles in um, Halloween food as well. It was like they got the idea from the Tylenol killings. Tons and tons and tons of countries celebrate their independence from the UK. The British Emperor grew ridiculously large before scaling back down. Some 66 countries eventually declared their independence from the Empire, meaning that now at least one country is celebrating Independence Day. From England, 52 days of the year. Jeez. <laughs> And they used um, the Canadian flag as the picture, so I'm guessing Canada is one of those. I should probably know that. I'm not good at history. LBJ owned a water serving car. Always the Joker. Lyndon Johnson would surprise an unwitting guest to his ranch by driving down the hill in his amphicar claiming the brakes had gone out. Once it hit the lake, their panic would subside when they realized their car had been designed to function on water. I saw a car back home that was legitimately a boat that had wheels and looked completely professionally done and not just slapped on like it looked watertight. So I wouldn't be surprised if that baby went on water sometimes. It's really cool. That's, I was going to read it, Sears used to sell houses. It's like good for them. There's an encrypted monument outside the CIA. A sculpture outside CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Fittingly includes so far uncracked codes created by the artist Jim Sanibor. The sculpture features four inscriptions, three of which have been cracked, but the fourth, which no one else has been able to figure out. Though in 2010, the artist offered one clue, the letters NYPVDD are an encryption of the word Berlin. <laughs> I love how the guy who made the code realized how hard it was which is not a compliment to him. That just means it's a bad code. Um, um, I'm not able to articulate what I actually mean. If the whole point of your code was to be very difficult, but that just a few smart people could figure out, then you'd hope it wasn't so ridiculously convoluted and actually not thought out, because if it was thought out well, then a few people would figure it out, but if it was just so ridiculously random that anybody could make it so ridiculously random, then that's just embarrassing, and the guy had to come out and, like, please try and figuring out, figure it out, here's a clue. Okay, let's read one more. I'll scroll until I find a really cool one, or I'll read a bunch of them until I find one that I like, and I'll, um, I'll read description, cold water is just as cleansing as hot water. I actually really want to know that. In Kent, people use knots to keep records. The U.S. Park Ranger once got hit by lightning seven times. Jeez. Bottled water. Expiration dates are for the bottle, not the water. Lol. Queen Elizabeth wouldn't sit on the Iron Throne. A hiker found and returned an ancient wallet. South Koreans are four centimeters taller than North Koreans. Animal 
shelters are slammed by July 5th. The most requested funeral song in England is by Monty Python. The most successful pirate was a woman. There may be treasure in Virginia. A sea lion once saved a man. Rich Russians hire fake ambulances. <laughs> Milk wagons gave us roadway lines. Pandas fake pregnancy for better care. <laughs> Businesses once didn't see the value of diaper solutions. Beloved children's book author Ronald Dell was a spy. NASCAR drivers can lose up to 10 pounds in sweat due to high temperatures during races. Victorians once used leeches to predict the weather. Uh, Indians spend more than 100 hours a week reading more than any other country in the world. The Aurora Borealis has a sister phenomenon in the southern hemisphere called the Aurora Australialis. Um, your funny bone is actually nerve. Pineapples were named after pine cones. A California woman tried to sue the makers of Cap'n Crunch after she learned crunch berries were not real berries. <laughs> the next one, Captain Crunch, full name is Horando Milan Crunch. Apple briefly added its own clothing and lifestyle line in 1986. The, idea, the IKEA ad catalog is the most widely printed book in history. Uh, three Musketeers bars had three flavors until wartime. Rations made excessing vanilla and strawberry flavors too difficult. 